Good morning, everybody, and welcome to Wake Up Missoula. I'm your host, Scott Ramp. I'm here to usher you in into the weekend. It is September 23rd. We're about a month away from wrapping up our uh, farmer's market here in the downtown Missoula area. So if you're interested in doing some more farmer's market and events in the downtown area, we're going to start wrapping up a lot of those activities by the end of October. So there's a lot of festivals happening. There's going to be a lot of things happening here and there this weekend, and we're going to dive right into it. So the Ukraine thing is kicking things up for Vladimir Putin and the Kremlin as they moved to turn all reserve troops to the front lines in Ukraine. Around 6,000 troops have been killed over the course of the 20 plus days Russian special operations um, in Ukraine and the Ukraine counteroffensive uh, uh, put a lot of ground for the Ukrainian folks. Uh, Putin announced a partial mobilization of armed forces and the partial turned out to be an upwards of a draft of 300,000 troops for the front lines. Thousands of protests have erupted in Russia because of the draft and many saying that the war is nothing more than a political theater costing the lives of Russian people. President of the United States Joe Biden gave a we won't to back down speech to the delegates of Russia at the UN uh, in New York the other day. Putin has doubled down his starts of using nuclear options if, with further Western interference and pressure uh, increasing from the Kremlin to get this conflict wrapped up as soon as possible along with China uh, snubbing um, Putin as well during talks. Um, so while Eastern countries are dealing with this conflict here at home, Puerto Rico is in trouble after Hurricane Fiona washed through it uh, the, this week. As of Monday, the Category 1 hurricane washed through the country about 85 miles per hour, and the damage has, has been calculated recently with uh, extensive damage with uh, well over 40% uh, of people without power, clean water, and after Hurricane Maria in 2017, Puerto Rico learned from it this and said it would uh, be uh, a matter of days, not months, to get the grid back in working order for 100,000 people affected by the power outage. Just as a reference, this was the time when Donald Trump was jump shotting uh, paper towels at the people during a press conference. President Biden approved an emergency declaration for Puerto Rico on Sunday authorizing the Department of Homeland Security and the Federal Emergency Management Agency to coordinate disaster relief efforts. Puerto Rico's Water Authority said services had been restored to more than two-thirds of its customers. The Island's Power Company says about 40 percent of its customers now have electricity. Uh, Puerto Rico is technically a state without statehood. Um, it's one of the many territories in the United States which include the Virgin Islands, Guam, which is also part of the Philippines, and the Mari Mariana Islands as well. So we cannot uh, talk about the weather without talking about Pakistan. As things begin to go into full recovery mode in uh, the country, many uh, rep representatives from Pakistan can attribute these weather patterns to global warming. Extreme temperatures, water drought are all prevalent in the region as they have to deal with ever-changing world. According to an analysis, Analysts by the group of international climate specialists in Pakistan, Europe, and the United States. Pakistan has sometimes experienced heavy monsoon rains. About 75% more water is now falling during weeks of the monsoon rains. Our heaviest, the scientists are estimating that it may be a uh, more common thing going into the future. And now, according to The Guardian, over 16 million children are affected by this food shortage, according to UNICEF. All water from uh, from the three months of rain may take anywhere between three to six months to recede. So with people out uh, in the elements, uh, waterborne diseases like cholera and other skin type diseases are on high alert. Dr. Uh, Ali, who arranged a medical camp in Warwick, a village in Kwambar, Shadokakot, sorry, uh, one of the most affected districts in the Sindh province, said he was more than 300 children on Saturday had all various conditions such as malaria, diarrhea, and skin diseases. These are, things are bad out there and even worse in America where we, uh, well not necessarily worse, but things are pretty bad here with so many modern solutions but not actually implementing them. Which, I, which brings me to Jackson, um, Mississippi is a prime example of a city infrastructure problems and water accessibility come into national attention as the water is either not drinkable or available to fight even some of the smallest fires. So, you know, imagine, you know, like Flint, Michigan, that, that became a huge national story, but like there are many other communities like that that don't get the national recognition and only because of this disaster um, um, at Jackson that uh, resulted in people being like, hey, we have a broken water system and it doesn't even help that this storm, this flood has happened as well. So for several weeks, the roughly 
150,000 residents. So basically imagine like the same population as Missoula doing with this kind of stuff. Not only have access to safe drinking water after severe rains and flooding overwhelming the crumbling system. September 15th, Governor Tate Reeves of Mississippi the, announced that the boiler, boiler boiling water advisory has been lifted. Not necessarily people are not boiling their water that's still going on here. New York Times article went into detail about how this has been a problem for so long that this flood was the only way that the story could be picked up by national news. And um, yeah, speaking of, of Missoula, uh, uh, because, you know, we have basically the same size of Jackson, Mississippi. Just imagine if that kind of stuff happened here. Like we've had floods in the past and the concept of the 100-year flood plain here in Missoula is such a um, prevalent thing and the always thing in the back of my mind just in general. I look at some of the drainage ditches that are across Missoula. So if you just drive around town, you see some of those drainages. They're, they're pretty high for sure. So it's kind of ridiculous. So Missoula has had, uh, you know, many heat waves throughout this time. Uh, we had near freezing temperatures just the other day. This morning it was pretty cold with a nice mist in the morning. Missoula has a little heat wave at the end of August with temperatures in the 90s before this nice uh, sweater weather. We just began. Trees are already turning and we can expect homecoming parade to happen tomorrow to be chilly and a small chance of rain. However, uh, the parade's going to start at 10 a.m. and it's going to be on South Avenue. So a big portion of the parade is going to be going from Sentinel High School general area South Avenue all the way to the Dorm Blazers, which is is uh, just across from Higgins Avenue. So that small stretch of South Avenue from Sentinel High School to uh, Higgins Avenue, a little beyond that, are going to be where the uh, homecoming parade is. They got, the, they got all that construction happening at the uh, Higgins, the Bear uh, Paw Print br uh, Bridge just outside of Higgins. Um, the only bridge that goes ag get, uh, across the Clark Fork River. And yeah, they're, they're, it, it, they can't really do a parade on that because of the construction. So they're going to be doing it on South Street. So MCAT will try to live stream it on Friday. So uh, you can look for it on our channel 189. And also you can go to MCAT.org and watch it via local live. That's what we're planning on doing for it. But of course, if you can't see it, we'll be going to be posting it on YouTube and Facebook later uh, Saturday afternoon. So you can check that out and more. Um, up next, we have uh, some videos featuring some of the kids of our Saturday drop-ins from last Saturday. So if you have a kid anywhere between the ages of 8 and 14, this is a great reference for them to get started with editing, making videos, and it's all about stop animation, baby. Blueberry pancakes acquired.
Hey guys, welcome back. Let's talk about some movies that are coming out now. It's time for Pre-Critic, where I prejudge a movie based on absolutely nothing but the title and perhaps some preconceived notions of watch if previously enjoyed movies at some point in my life. <laughs> but anyways, let's uh, let's start this uh, terrible movie uh, fest. All right, kicking things off, it is the Hollywood-esque uh, Oscar season, but also it's going to be mixed in with a lot of horror movies. So. You, you can't tell whether or not a lot of these are either horror movies or just straight up Oscar bait movies. So we're in the horror game genre leading to Halloween pre-Oscar season. What's the difference? Watch as a character of this movie gets nitpicked on whether they actually got along with the director and other actors in this movie is basically about gaslighting a poor woman into marrying Harry Styles. Ew, who wants to marry Harry Styles? Gross. Long, tan, and handsome? I am disgusted. Vomiting? Gross. Blech. Anyways, harken back to the good old days where modern conveniences made housewives bored and crazy in this rich cult Stefford Wives Club type movie to keep you single forever. Then we got, this isn't a horror movie, but this is a Blumhouse film, so you know it's going to be a horror film uh, where it's just like, um, tic-tac-toe, but a horror movie. Enjoy a movie where it's just like, uh... Smile, boom, horror movie, you got, you got a movie, let's move on. So enjoy a scream cream blowing her lungs out as she is on borrowed time before the smile gets her and nothing, and, and it's like a week. Yeah, she has a week to live after she sees a smile that gets her to smile and get, go crazy. But anyways, um, blah, 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 notes. Enjoy a series of clues and horror elements as this lady becomes more and more crazed like those ones she tried to help but also learn more about and also try to get away from this. So this movie will probably end with her in a padded room or whatever with a smile cursed for the final scare before you even know if she died or not, which you pretty much is probably going to die. So anyways, uh, moving on, we got a, a, a series of movies coming out. This is The Railway Children. We're uh, chugging along in this family-friendly adventure of hitching a ride on the rails of a train taking kids away from war-torn England in World War II. Nothing says family-friendly like Nazis at your heels, Indiana Jones. Good example. Uh, the, on the come-up, she wants to be the world's best rapper at 16. Watch this lady break the glass ceiling and defeat the patriarchy with her sick Hollywood-sponsored lyrics. Um, Wicked Games, you like John Wick, get ready for Wicked Games following the lady on her quest to find every gun in her, guy in her way to get the thing and make the thing happen and make friends along the way. Action, fighting, and more fighting. Finally, we got another Oscar bait movie that kind of sounds like a horror film. It's uh, The Swearing Jar. Watch a lady stuck between the perfect guy and <laughs> another perfect guy. Watch a series of romance inspiring from a girl who not only has one soulmate, but two. Uh, she probably chooses herself while well, the two guys become BFFs and have uh, live happily ever after. All right, so that's just my uh, <laughs> what I think is going to happen. So those are your uh, movies and everything like that. Up next, we have uh, Black Dragons from a 1942 noir film. So enjoy this, and then when I come back, we're going to talk about some city council stuff. Well, I hope someday they come up with a paperless way of reading the newspaper. Hmm. Maybe someday. 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 Hey, Mary. And another thing, don't expect me to come all the way downstairs to do all your laundry and your dirty, uh, skid marked okay, underwear. I guess you I'll... hear that? I guess I'll get on that, then. Oh, no, you don't. Just put me and turn me off. You're going to listen to me. You got that? Well, excuse me. Excuse me. Here. Here's your piece of evidence. 
What the heck does this even mean? Huh. Interesting. Hmm. Hmm. Hmm? Alright. Guess I'll do my job. <laughs> Isn't it wonderful to be handsome? Yes, but it doesn't help that you're a terrible person, too. Huh. Thanks for noting my handsomeness. It is the most important thing, after all. I guess there's no way of getting past your massive male ego. Oh, I'm sorry, I wasn't really listening. I heard it was massive and male. You know what? Things should be a lot if easier. If everyone is handsome? You know, I thought about that myself, but that's just not the case, because if everyone's handsome, no one is handsome. Self-love is very important, but in your case, it's you're kind of buying out the shop. <laughs> when you're as handsome as me, you don't need to buy anything. Well, I've enjoyed your banter as much as I can, but I'm a detective, and I'm here to ask you some questions about your... Huh, what does this well, say? Well, something about plastic surgery. Oh, it's real, darling. Plastic surgery is a front to me. Well, how do you figure? Well, when you're as naturally handsome as me, other people try to catch up, and that really uh, saturates the pool of handsomeness. All I know is that somebody here has gotten plastic surgery. Well, I don't like what you're presuming, detective. I'm naturally handsome. Well, believe it or not, Mr. Handsome, I was once considered a great beauty at my youth. Well, judging by your ears and nose size at your age... Hmm. That's the biggest compliment that you're going to get from this guy. Uh, uh, yeah, that's, yeah, that's right. I've got to go see ya. Oh yeah, and don't forget to wash my beanie babies, okay? That man was incredibly handsome, but that always comes at a price. <laughs> you don't actually think that I got... I wouldn't think of it, honey. The only OG natural person here is you. Are you saying that he might have gotten the surgery? Handsome only lasts for so long, and time is ticking, and I've got to go. All right, we're kicking off the city council meeting. I just wanted to uh, let you guys also know it's going to be the first time we're having a brand new mayor in the last 17 years to kind of uh, swear in the meeting. So first council city with the new mayor, Jordan Hess's city council proceeded Monday with your typical meeting. Um, however, a couple of the agenda items on the consent agenda are worth mentioning because the neighbor works funding to help folks was passed, not just trailer parks, but the land that they lease under uh, through the Montana Department of Commerce awarding 850000 thousand dollars to the city of Missoula for resident owned um, community so this is part of the ROC project in Missoula and I wanted to kind of mention that as well because it is a, a important step in keeping people in their homes uh, regardless of what is built on top of them so that's something that they're moving forward and if you want to learn more information about this organization go to neighborworks.com you can look that up at neighborworks um, then type in Missoula through the search engine of your choice all right uh, public comment uh, Kevin Hunt comes during city council uh, uh, to comes to uh, the uh, sorry let me restart that Kevin Hunt comes to the defense of Daniel Carlino who uh, it's to his defense in the matter of last Monday's turmoil when it came to electing Jordan Hess for the city of Missoula so here is uh, Kevin Hunt I'm respectfully demanding first of all that the mayor um, state categorically on the record tonight that the report in the Missoulian that the council censured Councillor Carlino is false he was never censured. It's outrageous that this got printed, and it's outrageous that not a single one of you has tried to correct it. A censure is a formal vote by a deliberative assembly finding one of its members has fallen below the standards of ethics expected of that member. As hard as it is to libel an elected official, I think it's happened, and I think it's up to you to, to correct it. Um, and with that, I'm asking that you all apologize to Councillor Carlino, or not all of you, some of you, um, for insinuating at the last meeting that he was somehow responsible for 21 ballots having been cast without resolving who would be mayor. All right, so that's what Kevin Hunt said. He also mentioned back and forth is that it wasn't just Daniel Carlino that uh, didn't change his vote. It was also uh, the rest of the city council that kind of kept their uh, same votes 
six to five throughout the whole entire election, and any one of them could have easily changed their votes. For those of you who don't know, it wasn't solely Carlino's fault, but a lot of the city leaned towards the same lines to the point of hours into the meeting for other uh, city council members to switch to uh, Jordan based on Mike Nugent's word of concession. Uh, I mean, I would be on Kevin Hunt's sides if Carlino didn't have that smug look on his face when he nominated Bob Giordano. Sorry, Bob. Um, but. Uh, for MCAT, uh, as we move into the first public hearing of the uh, City Council meeting, um, MCAT is a big part of the news happening uh, and moving forward with the new cable company. And so part of this is that Brian Gorgon, he's a consultant with the city, is uh, speaking about the new uh, franchise, the new cable company that is moving into the city of Missoula. So here's a little bit of background information on that. When TDS came knocking last July seeking a competitive franchise, we gave them the exact same proposed contract and the goal that the city had was to have nearly identical documents so that no company would be provided an unfair advantage. We would grant them both similar authorization and they could compete for customers in your city. We have reached agreement on the terms of the TDS franchise. It calls for a 10-year franchise. It's a 5% franchise fee on the revenue that TDS will derive from cable television services. So keep in mind that this authorization will let TDS provide broadband services, which is what most people are focused on these <coughs> days, but we do not collect a fee on broadband. And you may ask, well, why not? And that's because the federal law prohibits the city from imposing a franchise fee on the broadband revenue. So all the different revenue that any company may gather from their cable franchise, we are only allowed to get cable TV revenue for that franchise fee. And what that basically means is that the money that is generated through uh, people who subscribe to TDS Cable, that franchise fee would necessarily go to MCAT for our continued operations. So many of you, of course, I've repeated this uh, many, many times, is that MCAT is um, basically uh, funded through, solely through the franchise fee, fee agreement, which is the people, the rate payers, the people who uh, pay for cable to uh, have this channel continue going. So in a lot of ways, we don't necessarily need to fundraise. We don't need to uh, take money from taxpayers. And this new fee would take some of, this, uh, some of the fees that the city has paid through their own general funding, much like our current franchise with Charge Spectrum, but have a solid budget with two channels with a new competitor. Missoula is potentially in a better position television-wise, um, just for more benefits. And like, it's not a monopoly when it comes to a single cable company. So that's one of the benefits. And <coughs> Brian wants to talk a little bit more about the uh, benefits as well with the franchise. And we're hoping that it will lead to some accelerated negotiations with Charter. Um, we have no goal to treat any of these operators in a more favorable or more burdensome manner. So we're hopeful that with this new contract having been adopted, we'll be quick to get to the table and complete the Charter renewal. And then to your second question, our goal would be to have them run concurrently and expire in 10 years so that we don't deal with both of them simultaneously in the event there are still cable franchises 10 years from now. Obviously, the industry is evolving quickly, and we shall have to see if, in fact, you know, we have continued cable franchising. But to the extent we do, we'd like them to be concurrent so we can address them at the same exact time. Okay, so there's still a lot of diehard people who uh, rely on cable to get their information. And as we move more and more into streaming and getting into that kind of stuff, it seems like um, just being able to have cable television is becoming more of a distant memory, even though that there's still a lot of core group of people who will still use this. But through these franchises, at least MCAT and public access television in general will be able to extend a little bit further just to be able to help people um, at home to create their own content and for this continuing works. And I get to keep my job. Uh, so the lion's sum will go to MCAT. And just so you guys know, the brass tax of things is the city of Missoula through these franchise agreements over the years. We have a total budget of $500,000. And then we franchise with the county because we were just in the city limits. And then the county with the franchise free agreement, we were able to get another $100,000 thousand dollars that goes towards the library branches for new equipment training and a lot of other things that kind of expand our operations not only here at this library but also being able to check out camera equipment and more through the other library branches specifically Sealy Swan so let's move on that's just kind of like some good news happening in the city of Missoula some more revenue that will be coming in through the city of Missoula through our 
cable lines right of way. So the city of Missoula owns the cable lines and then they basically rent them by giving this franchise agreement. So that's what the whole memorandum of understanding what they're talking about for these meetings. So um, <clears throat> you can uh, learn more by going onto the website and finding out more information through MCAT.org and also ci.missoula.mt.us, which I'll talk about again later in the show. So we're moving on to the Community Development Block Grant and Home Investment Partnership programs in the pre uh, preparation of Consolidated Annual Performance and Evaluation Report, CAPER, for the program year of 2021. So uh, the build grant, block grant, all, all this stuff, home programs, a lot of this stuff has been uh, talking about a lot of funding for housing, uh, projects and more and everything like that. So Kendra Lysom with this presentation talks about a lot of these uh, award and grant projects moving forward. While we receive the approximately the same amount every year, um, the, the funds aren't adjusted for inflation, which means that we have to do more, excuse me, with less money. With those funds, including any program income we receive from past projects, we are able to fund a total of five projects this year. Um, in 2021, we funded two home projects. Uh, the goal of the Trinity Apartments project, partially funded in program year 20 as well, is the construction of 202 um, affordable units on two separate sites and construction continues and ex is expected to be uh, completed in 2023. And a lot of these grants, just so you know, is like uh, situations where you know you put your money where your mouth is, um, and the federal government helps cover a lot of the costs that are put into it as well. So there's a lot of money to be uh, worked with, and through these block grants, they were able to achieve that moving forward. So I'm not gonna bore you with too many details, but these grants have been uh, consistent in, in Missoula long before the pandemic relief fund for the purpose of affordable housing, which even before the pandemic was hard to get into. We dive into communications from the mayor for Jordan Hess's first statement as uh, mayor of Missoula. So here's Jordan Hess. It's been a it's been a whirlwind of a week. Um, a ton of information. Um, a ton of um, um, meeting. Uh, you know, meeting some staff that I that I hadn't met before. Um, becoming um, acquainted with with a variety of issues. Um, I am, as the saying goes, drinking from a fire hose, and I'm um, I'm I'm splashing a lot in the process. And so I'm I've missed a few things, and I and I appreciate everyone's patience as I um, learn and get up to speed. Um, I want to give a shout out to the city staff who have helped with my with my onboarding process. The staff in the mayor's office um, is um, phenomenal and has um, kept good tabs on me and, and kept me pointed in, in the right direction. Um, so, and I want to thank everyone for um, your um, patience and grace as I as I settle into this. And the transition is usually easy when you keep a lot of the uh, for previous mayor's staff on um, on hand for moving forward. So, um, and because Jordan Hess is now the mayor of Missoula, they have to fill his uh, city council ward seat. So Marty Rabine, uh, uh, county, uh, no, sorry, uh, city clerk, talks about uh, the process and what you guys can do and how you qualify to be the city council member in Ward 2, in which they'll have the same city council election with a 7 uh, out of 12 vote for the person in the uh, university district. So if you live in the university district and you want to be on city council, they're going to be doing the appointment process. And for folks in our viewing audience who might be wanting to apply, one of the things that I'd encourage you to do in addition to submitting a fantastic application is uh, to check your voter registration and make sure that your voter registration address uh, is A, located in Word 2, and B, that it is up to date and matches your application. You can go to the Montana My Voter page uh, on their website and look up your voter registration and see uh, what your voter registration address is that's of record with the county. And if it doesn't match the, you know, where you currently live, that doesn't mean you can't serve. It just means that if you live in Word 2, uh, we would like to see the address that you're registered to vote at match your voting application. That'll save us a little bit of time in our vetting process. All right, so there you go. There's a little bit more information on that. You can probably go online to apply the same way uh, if you applied for the mayorship, like me. Uh, <laughs> go to ci.missoula.mt.us for more information. And I also have some good news in terms of housing because it seems like spring 2023 is going to be a kind of like a uh, 180 when it comes to the housing stock in the city of Missoula. And so I'm going to talk a little bit more about that and why during Community of the Whole into the... Uh, um, we're going to talk about the Food Policy Advisory Board before we jump into uh, 
the uh, Missoula Housing Authority. So this one is a big chunk because this housing, this food board is one of the newest boards in the city of Missoula and has been um, a big proponent in cre uh, creating a way for us to find out where our food comes from and where it goes and processing and everything like that. So Erica uh, Begland, uh, board chair of the food policy uh, board, uh, talks about uh, where the meat comes from and hopes uh, to come from in the future. So we're talking about meat. We've done in the last year is, as I mentioned, help this county apply for a local food promotion um, program grant through the USDA. Um, this was requesting $25,000 to um, basically do a feasibility study to understand um, what it might require and um, what kind of scale would be feasible for additional local meat processing infrastructure. One of the things that I'm sure you all are aware of that has come up more recently with COVID is that um, meat processing is a huge bottleneck in our food system. And especially within Missoula County, uh, no exception, and that we have a lot of local or a fair amount of local um, livestock producers, but they tend to have to ex essentially export their meat out of or their animals outside of the county in order to get those processed. So um, hope wanting to get some more information about that. And um, I was told that we will hear um, whether we receive this grant or not by the end of this month. And part of this grant is, is a big important part of whether or not they're going to determine how they're going to be uh, moving forward with uh, food sourcing and meat products and everything like that. And one thing that you should also know is that, um, and you know, meat source is very tricky in a lot of ways. And a lot of what a lot of companies have been doing in the past is like, um, it kind of feels as though like, and you know, I have some family in the eastern Montana who have had to uh, figure out ways and script and script and save to try to sell their livestock that they just can't find a good buyer to buy their livestock in the first place because they're definitely a small town family farm. Um, so let's call it a corporate meat. Uh, so big meat, where the uh, some cases uh, processed meat from other countries, uh, Mexico mostly, and then one that is processed complete in the processing plant in America. You have the Mar Made in America logo solely based on the fact that it's like, okay, the cows are raised in Mexico, but then they're brought up here or they're slaughtered down there, but then they're repackaged here in America. Hence, you're able to have that. Um, made in America logo because technically it was made in America. So there's a lot of weird loopholes that go on with that. So think about that a lot of times when you're sourcing this stuff. And a big chunk of what Erica was talking about is that even that we have the uh, places that have meat processing in, in Missoula, we still have to go as far as Superior to have it go through another system then come back to Missoula for it to go through another whole process and everything. So um, though that's one of the big things that they were kind of talking about is like, okay, why do we have to go uh, send it back and forth and do this whole import export thing. How can we figure out a way to be more sustainable in the city of Missoula? But also agriculture is another step this uh, board in making to ensure farmland is zoned only for that purpose and making it easier for those buying a farm to get the farm. But this is just a dream at this point and some wheels are turning for the legislature in uh, Montana's and Missoula's attempt to open up agriculture. So Erica talks about the trend in Missoula um, from this. Uh Many decades ago, Missoula had um, ample infrastructure to process meat um, that kind of with globalization and all that kind of moved away. Um, and so I think that's a huge driver. Um, but I think we've also just seen um, a growth in and concern and interest in local food in, in our community and um, more awareness of the importance of that. And, and so and we do have a couple of ranchers on our board and understanding that, you know, um, you know, for example, um, Bart Morris of Oxbow Cattle Company, they um, have a thriving local sustainable food or uh, meat business, um, beef business, but they do still have to <laughs> ship their cows out, drive their cows out. I believe it's every other week and it's only to Superior, so it's not super far, but just the fact that, you know, as consumers, I go to, you know, buy some Oxbow beef. I don't realize that it, and it is local beef, but it had to leave before it got to me. And so some, that's something we've been talking a lot about as a board. And then, um, yeah, COVID has really exacerbated that. Um, and, and there was just a lot of supply issues and, you know, labor issues with those um, 
those few facilities out. All right, so I'm going to stop her there. Um, but the point is, is that they're making is that it just kind of showed a lot of the cracks in how much uh, we depend on import, uh, basically importing a lot of our foods and a lot of our supplies here. And just uh, it kind of feels as though like a lot of people are starting to wake up and being like, okay, it kind of feels a little weird that we're constantly doing this whole like traveling and like not making our own food, but at the same time depending on other places and also the transportation infrastructure, which at this point is looking a little slimmer and slimmer every year. And there's just a lot of talks about how this is like, a, this is, I'm definitely making this a lot bigger than it uh, necessarily needs to be, but this is something that should draw a lot of attention to the fact that there's not much in terms of transportation um, in terms of like, you know, there's less and less people want to become truckers, less and less people want to do any kind of food transport in general. Sure, there's a lot of like the whole like Uber drive and all those Lyft kind of deals where they try to have, you know, people who deliver food to your homes, but that's not just the same. It's, 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 it's interesting. Like the concept of the world economy has basically had us uh, buying cheap um, food um, that may not be good for you and then selling our uh, own raised cattle to other countries in the long run. So, you know, even in the state of Montana, you know, uh, Brian Schweitzer back in the day, I remember he went all the way to New York to kind of uh, posture towards China to get us to sell some of our Angus beef to China. So it's interesting kind of how we're moving this way and just trying to figure out a way how to source our food. So, you know, that, you know that's just the way it is. It's, it's always about money and trying to figure out ways to cut costs for everything. And, you know, we have cheaper food, but it doesn't mean it's good food. So. Let's move on. We're going to talk a little bit more about housing. So like I said, there's going to be some great news for those of you looking for some housing stock. A lot of houses are for sale right now. There's, there's a dip in the market. Interest rates are unfortunately much higher than they were before for quite some time now. And the Housing Redevelopment and Community Program Committee meeting dives into the Missoula Housing Authority and this quasi-governmental organization established in 1978. Their mission is to work through a creative partnerships and innovative development to provide quality housing solutions for low and middle-income households in Missoula and the surrounding area. Lori Davison, Executive Director of MHA, talks a little bit more about some of their development. Things, one of our, uh, one of the things that we really enjoy doing is developing housing to increase the housing supply or uh, acquire and rehab existing housing so that we don't lose affordable housing in our community. We're one of Missoula's largest affordable housing developers. And currently we have $121 million worth of construction going on right now, 404 homes, 200 at the Villaggio project, and 400, I mean 204 homes on the Trinity sites. There are two, two sites there, one on Mullen Street and one at Cooley Street. So Villaggio, <clears throat> is well underway, uh, predicted to, to be coming online in the spring of 2023. The siding is going up and we were just out there yesterday. It's gonna be a great project. This is a partnership with a, with a, excuse me, a private developer, Blue Line Development and Madison Creek a Madison Creek. Okay, okay, I'm going to stop right there. Um, I, I'm playing it from the directly uh, the line from the website, so it's, it's I, I always forget which uh, part when I'm supposed to stop. So this is a group that gives vouchers for renters in Missoula that those who qualify and it's first come first serve, making it about uh, available for people who make zero to about eighty percent of Missoula's average area income. And so far, six hundred and eighty thousand dollars are spent on housing assistance a month in the city of Missoula. So there's a lot of money going towards this. And so the spring of 2023 is gonna turn a lot of these homelessness issues on its head. It's crazy how much uh, is happening in the city of Missoula, but being the buzzkill that I love, um, you can uh, lead a horse to water, but you can't expect them to go on a website and find out more information um, if they have no internet connection. So uh, Kayla from MHA uh, talks about the success stories about some of the people who are able to take advantage of these programs. There are a couple of success stories we wanted to share with you. I won't read these in full, but this one is about a woman who had been in a domestic violence situation, experienced homelessness, and ultimately ended up in a housing authority rental and through support of SSS um, is now a homeowner and has a stable home for her children. And then another success story of veteran who lived in Valor House, which is a, a property specifically for veterans, also had experienced homelessness and really needed a way to get back on track with, excuse me, um, employment. So 
through a City of Missoula and Housing Authority work program. He got experience and then um, was able to get a job in the food service industry. He graduated from the program with $20,000 of savings that he can use for whatever needs he has going forward. And part of the uh, uh, system that they put in place is that they, whatever rent you pay, they have some extra money that you can put aside to a, a savings as you move and transition out of this uh, affordable housing into more permanent housing moving forward. So there's been a good amount of people using this program. And, you know, in a lot of ways, it kind of feels like, oh, wow, I kind of uh, lost track of all the programs that the city of Missoula has. Um, you know, the Missoula Housing Authority is just like, so that like, kind of goes over my head um, in a lot of ways because you have like uh, resources that work with them that go with uh, Homeward, which also owns a lot of affordable housing properties and also um, just in general with like Human Resource Council, which they uh, referred to during this meeting as well. And the Human Resource Council is what I used to uh, help put down a, a down payment for my house back in uh, 2018. And they gave an extra $30,000, 0% interest. And the only time you have to pay it back is if you actually decide to sell your house. So if I never sell my house, I never have to pay that $30,000 back to anything. So this is kind of interesting and a lot of information, a lot of good news happening. And spring 2023 is going to be a big change and there's going to be a lot of housing stock for a lot of people. But but then again, you got to understand that a lot of the people don't know a lot of these things are going to be available. Heck, I didn't even know about a lot of these projects. And I knew about the Trinity project like constantly because the city of Missoula would constantly just harp on this as stuff like that and more. Um, and also a great website, not only the city of Missoula's website, ci.missoula.mt.us, is um, Engage Missoula. Dot com is a wonderful resource to find out all the programs that are happening in the uh, city of Missoula in terms of like development projects, housing, bridges. You can find out how long it's going to take for Higgins Bridge to get over with. Sorry, Bear Paw Bridge, whatever it's called. Um, the development, you know, just different things, applications, different things happening, you know, farm park. Look at all this stuff that they have here. Cannabis Title V update, just a little bit more information about, you know, little things happening in the city of Missoula in terms of zoning and permit requesting. Just a lot of things. This is a great way for people to actually look at these projects. Marshall Mountain, which is a big big thing that's happening and whether or not they're spending hundreds of thousands of dollars to assess whether or not they want to buy Marshall Mountain in the first place. So the city of Missoula and the Parks and Rec are looking to kind of promote this and try to be like, hey, you know, we should buy this mountain and it's going to be a great opportunity for uh, Parks and Rec and resources for people to get outdoors, plus some great hiking trails and a, and a ski slope for folks um, for the city of Missoula. So that is kind of it for your uh, city council report. I'm going to dive right into some more information about what's happening in and around the city of Missoula in terms of events and just kind of doing things. And so um, if you have a kid in the Sealy Lake area and you want to learn about some development preschool screening clinic, a free de uh, developmental and clinic is for kids age 0 to 5 for the Sealy Lake and Swan Valley districts will be held Friday and beginning at 9 a.m. to about noon today. Um, you can schedule an appointment. This fee, uh, free screening will include a gross motor, fine motor, language concepts, communication concepts, communication skills, uh, hearing and vision screening. This is a great way for kids to kind of uh, get some uh, a quick free checkup, especially if you're in an area in Sealy Swan where you can't necessarily bring your kid all the way to Missoula to go to the hospital. So there's not many, many um, screening clinics for that. So there's a great opportunity for those out there in our Missoula County, which is uh, part of Sealy Lake. So. Stroller Strides, Mommy and Me workout class, if you're interested. This is an ongoing thing that happens most, a lot of times at Bonner Park, Greeno sometimes. Uh, this one is at Bonner Park and it starts at 9.30 a.m. on Fridays. Uh, they do this pretty consistently. It's a great way for moms to bring their kids, um, have some supervision and get some uh, workouts while they're uh, going out and about. So Empower Place, open play hours at the food bank. Empower Place is a wonderful resource. It's a, a part food bank, part community center, and a part science and discovery center as well. So a lot of uh, organizations, reading, library, Spectrum Discovery Center, just a lot of organizations have their stake into the Missoula Food Bank. And also the Missoula Food Bank is open today for people who uh, need some cheap and nutritious food. Tiny Tales and Storytime at the library at 10.30 a.m. today. This is a great way for uh, kids to get um, involved with reading and learning, but they also do this at the Empower Plant at the Missoula Food Bank at 10.30 with a regime who is going to be uh, leading the uh, read uh, uh, tiny Tales and their own version of story time. All right, open art exhibit, Love Letters to Missoula Radius Gallery is proud to uh, feature over 20 intimate paintings from longtime artist Christy ha uh, Hager. Um, work she calls Pieces of My Heart, 
Love these le uh, these love letters to Missoula Dwell and the daily rhymes and sights of the uh, rhythms and sights from the artist's life walk uh, along Rattlesnake, laps in the public pool, summer floats on the Clark Fork River and grocery store parking lot at sunset. Portrait of her, her hometown that capture a moment while ex also exploring new techniques. Yarns and watercolor is happening here at the Missoula Public Library on the fourth floor. If you're interested in being part of um, an organization that kind of teaches and shows you how to do uh, watercolor and yarns and you stitch and crochet and all that stuff, it's a great opportunity to meet up with people and here on the fourth floor of the library every Friday at noon. Lego Club is also happening this afternoon from 2.30 to about 5 p.m. is a great opportunity for, hey, just play with Legos. Don't think about it too much. Um, here at the library at 2.30 in the arts room at the second floor. Super Friends with Zach James. This is going to be a fitness class, upbeat music, rooftop in Missoula. This is going to be at the VRTX Fitness Center. And this is a uh, part of uh, just, you know, having some good times and doing some uh, via Apex Bistro. So. All right, buckle up two on the road again. So part of this is a series of plays. Uh, this is going to be uh, this is an ongoing thing that I talked about last weekend, but is also wrapping up this weekend and will be wrapped up on the 25th. And they have showings at 6 and 8 p.m. Uh, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Uh, sorry, my nose is itchy, but uh, Montana Repertory Theater announces its first production of its 56th season. Buckle up two on the road again, a continuation of Rep uh, Play on Tap series. So they're going to be playing at Montgomery Distillery at 6 p.m. tonight. An evening with Trey Anastasia Band is going to be at Kettle House Amphitheater. Um, they're going to be performing live at 6.30 p.m. Next to Normal is going to be at Westside Theater. It's the Books and Lurks by Brian Yorkie and music by Tom Kitt. Explores how one suburban household copes with the crisis and mental illness. Winner of three 2009 Tony Awards, including Best Musical Score and the 2010 Pulitzer Prize. And it's going to be presented by AM, Theor uh, AM Theatrical. And it's going to be at Westside Theater tonight at 7 p.m. Aerial Performance, River City Band. Uh, River City Bad Girl, Raven Summer, and the Fly Girls will be performing next to the patio from 7 to 9 p.m. at Cranky Sam Public House with DJ Ben providing music. Uh, free to charge. Come he have a beer and hang out with the Cranky Sam patio. Uh, Sean, Shane, Shana Steele, Open Ma um, Maria Zapetta. Zootown Arts Community Center is one of the greatest singing sensations of our times. Another recordings from Snarky Puppy and Moby and a host of other stars. Uh, Shayna Steele takes flight on her third album, Watch Me Fly, offering six self-penned originals and four uh, select classic ranges from soul via blues and gospel and easily uh, crossing over to retro R&B and jazz. So it's a lot of experimental music and you guys can check that out at Zootown Arts Community Center tonight at 7 p.m. And they're going to have a birthday edition at Dueling Pianos at Stave and Hoop tonight. Um, and then starting on Saturdays, you got your markets and such from 8 a.m. to about 2 p.m. It's a great way to get some locally sourced food directly from the uh, growers themselves, people who are peddling their wares and also jams and honeys and baked goods and all stuff like that. Missoula Walk to Defeat ALS, starting at 10 a.m. at McCormick Park. A walk to defeat ALS is the number one way to unite and fundraise for those living with ALS, um, also known as Lou Gehrig's disease. Each year, fundraisers through the walk drive bold and urgent innovations as we march together to cure ALS. And so this is going to be happening um, in McCormick Park. Register is free. Uh, fundraise and honor your loved ones. Um, let's see. Kids class, Halloween Skeleton. So it's never too early to talk about uh, Halloween and Painting with a Twist is hosting a kids Halloween class starting at 10 a.m. Saturday kids activity, Building Beavers, the Missoula, Montana History, History Center. You can get tickets online. You can go to the Montana History Center at 1 p.m. And at 1 p.m. is a great way for kids to get some after some activities and learn about beavers and all that stuff. Or they can come to our Saturday drop-in, which happens from 1 to 3 p.m. every single Saturday, where we do Saturday anime drop-in. So I showed you the video, the video at the very beginning of the show. Stop animation kind of like that, you know, kind of getting some good start, maybe do some sprite animation, just do a lot of different, different things like that. Not the kind of animation where you draw, just so you guys know. There are ways we can help kids with the drawing, but when it comes down to it, it always comes to down to stop animation and bringing their inanimate objects to life. Uh, Democracy Project Open House. So at the Missoula Public Library, you can drop off your kid at 1 o'clock and then you can go to the Democracy Project. Are you a teen passionate about making a difference in the world? The Democracy Project is for you. Join the like-minded teens for food, fun, and activism as you find out more about this rewarding teen-led civic engagement program. So this can be at the fourth floor, Cooper Room AB from 2 to 4 p.m. Circus de Suites, uh, Somatic uh, Event Center. 
uh, never heard of that place. Enjoy an evening of Circus Skill Demonstration at Zero Gravity's fundraiser, Circus de Suites, 5 p.m. at the Cymatic Event Center. Sun Dog North is going to be at Imagination Brewing Company uh, at 6 p.m. on Saturday. Uh, Tom Catmull will be at DraftWorks Brewing Company on Saturday at 6 p.m. Kitchen Dwellers is going to be at the Walma. Live music by Strange Time String Band at Cranky Sam Public House. 7 p.m. Uh, is a new string ensemble playing a mixture of modern and traditional covers and original songs. Comedian Ed Hill is going to be at the VFW, fresh off the release of one-hour special Candy and Smiley. Ed Hill br is bringing the laughs to Missoula for one night only. Then you got karaoke at Westside Lanes, you got salsa at uh, the Dark Horse Bar, and then you got Chris Moon at the Badlander to wrap it up your Saturday night. But also I wanted to mention the Save Kids Fair is happening on Sunday, so if you want your kids to be safe and learn about uh, seatbelt safety, fire safety, and all those things, that's going to be at the Community Medical Center campus. It's just off of the road uh, going down to uh, Fort Missoula, and it's right next to the Community Medical Center. Kids are going to fall. Slip and explore. It's part of a mini kit. The Safe Kids Missoula Coalition is bringing together community partners to deliver safety, education about medicine, car seats, fire, water, and more to make sure slips and falls don't become a serious injury. And uh, Historic Museum for Missoula, when you're done with that, you can pop on over to the Fall Harvest Festival. The Historic Museum for Missoula is excited to celebrate autumn by bringing back the Fall Harvest Festival. The event will take place Saturday, September 25th from 11 to 3 p.m. This family friendly event is something everyone from apple cider pressing to fall crafts and games to live animals. So that's happening there. And then also on Sunday, the Rainbow Fish Theater for Young Audiences. MCT for Performing Arts is doing The Rainbow Fish, experience the beloved international bestseller and award-winning book, The Rainbow Fish, and its wonderful message of friendship and belonging. Be performing on Sunday at 1 p.m. Then you got the Rocky Horror Open Auditions. Hey, you like the Rocky Horror Picture Show? Missoula does a Rocky Horror uh, show live and it's back and they want you to be part of it. Singers, dancers, actors are invited and all roles are paid. There's no preparation or experience required. If you have ever wanted to be on the Wilma stage, this is your chance and this can be part of an uh, organization at Studio M. You can look up uh, this information and more by going on to uh, MissoulaEvents.net. So MissoulaEvents.net is telling you everything that you need to know about what's happening in Missoula, all the links, all the ticket links and all that stuff. This is where I get most of my information from as well. So that's pretty much it for me. I wanted to thank you guys for joining me um, and for Wake Up Missoula. I'm Scott Ramph. Take care, guys.